Welcome back to another episode of Regarding Consciousness. Today, we have a very special thought leader, brilliant man, and creator of a healing modality, Dr. John Ryan. Dr. John, as he is called and known, is a board certified specialist, associate professor of medicine, and longtime student and practitioner of energy and consciousness based medicine. He is the author of Unity Field Healing, Volume 1, Foundations of Energy Medicine and Quantum Healing. This book is a holistic primer designed to bring the reader to a panoramic understanding of the awakening power of spiritual consciousness and energy-based healing, and to serve as a practical and personal tool to deeply integrate this new human potential. In recent years, his work has led him to the mystical thresholds of the quantum nature of DNA and its integral connection to the human spirit. His passion is to apply the potential of this awakening knowledge to support the human in healing. This has culminated in his role as the founder of Unity Field Healing, UFH. It is a new quantum healing process based on a conscious activation of the DNA quantum field to support healing and personal evolution. On that note, Dr. John, I think a perfect way to start today's show is to say I actually had a session uh, with one of the practitioners on our om-heals.com website, Brenda, who we're talking about offline, and it was really extraordinary. I'd never tried it before. And I personally noticed, in fact, I told Brenda as soon as the first week had passed that I wanted to do another session with her <laughs> because it was really incredible. I could feel that the blockages that I was experiencing in life really seemed to dissipate and things seemed to go a little bit more easily. Is that how it's designed? That's brilliant. Yeah, it is, Jennifer. So first of all, just a big hello to the whole community <laughs> listening here. And thanks for that wonderful introduction. So I just, um, the work itself is is tailored to work within the human energy access that's expanding at this time, what we would call the quantum DNA, or what I refer to as the 24th chromosome. Now that's a, an unusual concept I realize for many people. So it takes a little bit of an introduction into the work to explain it. But what really happens is the energy system between our life, you know, our current life th that we're living ourselves as a current human being, so to speak, and the spiritual connection that we all hold through this quantum field to the higher dimensions of who we are, like our soul, our higher self. And so the energy work is tailored to create opening spaces and recalibrating this field so that we can have greater access, if you will, to our potential, our, our consciousness potential that we hold as spiritual beings. And so you describe the experience very well. People have a whole array of experiences, but they all they always can be summarized in a way to this greater sense of connection and openness and release of energies that seem to be in the way of their their greater well-being. Mm, it is so powerful. I mean, as somebody who spends a lot of time in prayer and meditation and is CEO of a company called Om Dash Heals, where we match people with energy medicine, it takes a lot to surprise me. And I have to say, <laughs> it's lovely though to be pleasantly surprised. We forget, even being somebody who runs a company like this, you you still have that little piece in the back of your mind that goes, but really, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really incredible, though, whether it's your work or people who do. There's a guy on our platform who's a retired physician's assistant who literally treats people from the inside out. He's like, let me check the back of your retinas and I'm going to now tighten your epiglottis for you. And you're like, how is this possible? So Dr. John, <laughs> tell us, how is this possible? How is energy medicine and quantum healing even possible to begin with? So it's a great question because we're living in a time where some of these concepts are becoming much more well-known. And there are a lot of people who are intuitively led to begin exploring these kinds of ideas and concepts. Some of them are scientists and deeply embedded in scientific exploration. But the vast majority of people are everyday people who hold careers of all different kinds or who work at home or, you know, they are, are taking care of their families or their children, all kinds of, there's a spectrum of people who are drawn to this kind of exploration. And people are starting to understand the both the energetic nature of reality and the consciousness basis of our expression in reality so in other words as human beings 
we're not these, you know, tangible little tanks that drive around in the world in bodies. We're actually very, very conscious beings. And we have uh, a higher self connection, a soul, if you will, a continuum with the spiritual reality. And our time here on the earth or our experience here on the earth is an emanation from that place of consciousness. And so we were born into this world and we take on energy vehicles to have expression in the world. And some of those energy vehicles look a little more form-like, like our physical body, for example. And others are more invisible, like the emotional field, the mental field, the other various, the, you know, the etheric energy body that's part of our system. And we're really like, um, you know, a, a Russian stacking doll where we have all these energy bodies that are brought together in fullness to have a human experience. And so when we approach healing or spiritual growth or, or expansion, consciousness expansion, we begin to encounter these things as real aspects of who we are. And so there's a bridge from beginning to heal outside of the traditional physical realms, you know, things that are limited to the physical world, you know, the things we, we're all familiar with, surgeries, medications, different kinds of things. We start working in consciousness for energetic realignment to bring a different energy posture within our energy system. And then that allows us to outpicture a different form of health. So if we can heal internally, we can heal externally. But we also start to understand we're not alone. <laughs> we're all connected. We live in a common field of consciousness or an energy field, the one field, or it has the unified field. There's all kinds of names that are used to explain this. But we we live collectively in a space where we don't see the energy between us, just like a fish in the water doesn't tend to see the water. They might see their neighboring fish friend, but they're not going to see the water in between them. There's an energy that exists around all things and we don't see it because it's part of the reality in which we live, but it's there. And when we start expanding in energy and consciousness, we're, it's like we're merging into this field. And as we do that, we become aware of abilities that are a little bit transcendent to normal, if you will. You become aware of your intuition. You become aware of being connected to other human beings. You become aware of being able to work in that space of energy with another human being without direct physical contact. So it's all part of that natural expansion. So we're kind of going from beginner level to very advanced understanding, but it, it's a spectrum. And, and, but that's really how I picture it. It's really because of this field that connects us all that we're able to do that. And so what was your background, Dr. John? Did you start off in traditional medicine? And I know we were talking a little bit beforehand that you just had these epic visions that I definitely want to hear about and <laughs> wants to hear about that led you to creating this unified field healing. Yeah. So, so my background is in medicine. I'm a, like I'm a Western trained physician. I went through medical school and all that stuff here in North America. And, um, and I still practice medicine. I'm a radiologist. So I work within imaging. So I work with MRI, CT, which is interesting to me because it's actually the beginning of energy medicine in traditional medicine. We're using all of these energy modalities like sound waves and magnetic fields or, you know, radiation to create images of the human energy system which we see as the body and we do diagnosis and all that kind of stuff of course working in those technical domains but my when i was finishing medical school i began to have some unusual experiences and i really wasn't seeking for this i wasn't really a spiritual seeker i was spiritually minded i was always the kind of person who saw the the importance of spiritual well-being within ourself and also behaving in the world in a way that reflected spiritual principles you know just integrity honesty kindness goodness uh, taking care of people around you all the kinds of good spiritual practices if you will <laughs> but i wasn't really religious or spiritually minded i was just going to school minding my own business and all of a sudden, I started to have these experiences. And often they would happen when I'd go to bed at night, I'd be laying down, and all of a sudden, my body would start to vibrate. And it would get really intense in energy, and it's like my spine would straighten, then different things would happen. I may, one night, for example, I popped out of my body, and in a conscious experience, I was moving around the room, 
but had vision. I could look back and see my physical body. I could see all the things happening in the room. I could move through the wall. I could still see through the window from the outside back into the room, <laughs> all wow. kinds of peculiar things. And what happened through the course of that was at first I was a little bit worried about this because I didn't know what was happening to me. Of course, my thought as a physician was, is something wrong with me? You know, like, do I have a brain tumor <laughs> or am I having some kind of a seizure? And, uh, but I didn't feel that was right. I kind of, I had this sort of comfort inside of me. There was, you know, just this little voice that said, it's really all okay, just be with it. And I was intuitively led to a bookstore one day and I walked into this bookstore, which was a new age kind of a bookstore, never been there before. And a book on the bookshelf started to magnify it, it, it. It was like when you run your mouse over a cursor on the computer and the icons get bigger. As I looked around the room, this book got big on the bookshelf. So I went over and I looked at it and it was called The Awakening, The Spontaneous Awakening of Kundalini by Gopi Krishna. And I started to read the back cover of the book and the information. And I thought, my gosh, some of this is the kind of things that are happening to me. And so I started to read the book. And of course, I was enthralled with it. And it introduced me to the concept of Kundalini. And I didn't know this. I wasn't raised in a system that had any exposure to, you know, Eastern systems of spirituality or healing. And so, but it opened my mind and I started to realize there's so much more to the human experience than we know. And so it was the, it was the experience that cracked my shell, if you will, like it kind of allowed me to start to see outside my box of thinking that, you know, we're all raised in and, and live in. And I started to explore some of this kind of stuff. So I became interested in Eastern healing and learned about acupuncture and, you know, various systems of healing that work with consciousness and energy based understandings. And uh, that was a whole journey for me, you know, to go through that. And I was exposed to Reiki, this concept of Reiki and energy transference and healing energy and all these kinds of things. So this was kind of part of a journey for me, but then I began to have visions. And the visions were meditative experiences that began teaching me things. It was like I was getting downloads of information, if you will, in visual stories. And I had to decode the information to make it make sense. And so that's kind of how it all unfolded. I mean, that it was a longer journey, but I'm just making it very short. <laughs> for the, I love the that you used the word downloads as well. I remember very clearly being in the car with one of my best friends I've known for 20 years, who's very pragmatic. And I said, oh yeah, you know, when I get a divine download and she looks at me and gives me side eyes, she says, nobody says divine download. <laughs> Everybody in my circle says divine download. You don't get them. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess when you're open to it, it does take a certain level, Dr. John, of receptivity, I think, right? Because Absolutely. you have just as easily after that first experience been like, okay, I should probably medicate myself because clearly there is something wrong with me. Right. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with medication. I am a huge advocate of the yeah. integration of Eastern and Western and energy medicine. And I think that the disruption that we all need to see right now around the world, not just in North America or Europe or wherever, is the treating of the whole person. So many people, it's heartbreaking who go through mental illness, physical illness over a whole lifetime. Sometimes it lasts an entire lifetime. Mm -hmm. We're treating the symptom and not the whole person. And that's what I loved about I when I first got introduced to Chinese medicine almost 15 years ago, I'll never forget this, Dr. John. I had been back and forth to Europe three times from Los Angeles to Europe. The third trip back, I got swine flu. And one of my oh, wow. dear friends was my, my doctor was a dear friend of mine. So I called David and I was like, David, you know, do you have that special pill? And he said, Jen, by the time I figured it out, I'd have temperature of 104 for two or three days. Wow. He said, you've passed the point where that pill would help that you just have to wait it out. And I remember thinking I was going to die, Dr. John. I was just, you mm -hmm. know, a fever of 104 for three days, four days straight. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, there was another Dr. John who was an acupuncturist who was part of a group that I was a part of. And I was deathly afraid of needles, deathly afraid. And do other Dr. John said, uh, Jennifer, please have somebody take you to my office. I don't care if you're ill. I will treat you and it will help. 
And no joke, Dr. John, within 24 hours of that, less than that, I think it was a few hours, my temperature dissipated and I went back to being a whole healthy human being. Those so of us don't realize that's even possible. I would have thought mm-hmm. you were crazy if you even told me that was possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. It, and it's a beautiful testimonial like to the nature of these experiences. And what you start to understand, I think, Jen, is you you have these experiences kind of on purpose, like they're they're part of a story, right? Because you live them, of course, they're never pleasant. You know, we can all recount our, our tragic woes. <laughs> Everybody yes. has them, of course, <laughs> our wounds, if you will. But as we work through the, the stories and the experiences we have, they're stepping stones for advancing consciousness and understanding. And so, so many things in my life that happened that at first I would want to maybe curse at, <laughs> you later come to be so grateful for because they're the things that are required to teach us in a really integrated way the reality of the words we're using, if you understand what I mean. And so when you live an experience like that, you realize the power that it exposed you to by opening your mind to that kind of healing and allowing yourself to have that experience. And then it's real for you. And nothing can ever take those experiences away. Once you've lived it and integrated it, it never you never lose it and you never doubt it. And I think it becomes really important for that. It allows us to have the faith and the the courage and the faith, I guess, in combination to keep trudging forward and learning and exploring and discovering new things. So let's talk more about your work, about mm-hmm. unity field healing. How does it work, Dr. John? For me, the science, the geeky part of me just like wants to geek out and just explain <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing about unity field healings for me was when I the way that I received this information was through a series of meditative encounters or visions, both experiences and visions. And I was shown this field of DNA and it it looked like a big helix, but it was made of energy, just like a chromosome is a spiral of a strand of DNA. It looked like a DNA strand, but it was made of energy and it was pulsing in light. And as I looked at it, I knew it represented DNA, but I I heard the words 24th chromosome in my my ear. And so I just kind of tucked that away as as an experience. I didn't quite know what to do with it. But then I was taken through another series of meditative visions where I was shown, this is going to sound a little strange perhaps to people, but I was shown what happens when a soul is planning to incarnate on the planet. Mm, I love and, that. And how we were we bring ourselves in a state of consciousness into the field of our higher self. We're making a plan for the lifetime ahead of us, the incarnation that we're about to live. And it may have different elements of energy. And what happens is our soul journeys to the earth. It kind of feels the energy of the earth while it's making decisions about how it will incarnate. So, for example, the country where it will live, or perhaps the mother it will choose, or the family it will be a child in, or, you know, some of the experiences that will be a setup for the probabilities that they need to have the experiences they're hoping to achieve as a soul. And so I was shown that when we do this, we we connect energetically in this way, and then we come back to a space where I was in a, in a courtroom, like in a European monastery or hotel, and it, all around me, there were these doorways made of energy. And I knew intuitively in the vision, if I went to a doorway and into it, I would be walking into a lifetime. Mm-hmm. But I was told, don't do that, stay still. So I was staying still in the vision. And all of a sudden, energy started flowing from the doorways, and it coalesced in this structure in the middle of the courtyard, that looked like a double diamond, like an eight-sided diamond pyramid. And the energy kept building and building in the structure. And at the top was a cord of light, a golden light that looked like a DNA helix. And the pyramid, all of a sudden the energy stopped flowing and the pyramid kind of gelled. And then it was like it shot through hyperspace. And the next thing I showed, it passed through a crystal in the earth, a quartz crystal, and then it merged with an embryo. And it was like all this information was packaged to bring to a developing child, if you will. When you have these visions, some of it are like um, 
metaphoric. They're not necessarily the actuality of how things are happening, but they're put together in a way so that you can conceptualize or really grasp the meaning of what you're being shown as a message. And so then I was shown because of what's happening on the earth right now, this process of ascension, we haven't really touched on that, but there's a special energy things happening on the earth right now. It's a time where the energy that people brought with them has the opportunity to expand and integrate in new ways. And so the work of Unity Field Healing followed these visions where I was shown a process to work with people to help activate this axis of energy that's expanding and create a space for the recalibration of energy within that field. So it's kind of the energy field between the human body and the soul. Mm -hmm. And so the work was designed in such a way that it's delivered in sessions. There's three sessions, but the first two sessions are really geared towards getting the system all primed up. So there's a session one, which is activation of the axis and a second, which is the activation of a template. I was shown a pattern of light that works within that quantum DNA system. And so the first two sessions are these activation sessions. And then the third session is called intuitive guided support or tailored support. And really you bring intentions into the work as you go into the energy session and the energy is responding to the intentions toward healing or development that a person brings. And so it's kind of a, a, a lot to explain, I guess, in a short brief, but people can read about it. And there are a lot of pictures and things like that that I use when I'm explaining this because the pictures are really conceptual and they help people really grasp the, the words. <laughs> And then the magic of the sessions is they're not technical. They're all about going through a patterned process that allows this field of energy to expand. And the energy has this incredible innate wisdom. It's like it knows what to do. But all we need is kind of the mechanical support, if you will, to make the space and to hold the intent for it to happen. And so we're working both with energy and consciousness, of course, in that process, but we're making this space, you know, one working practitioner with a, with a client, if you will, or person heart to heart is really what I like to say. And we're working, you know, two people together with a common goal around the session. And it creates this really expanded quantum energy space for internal changes or internal alchemy to help the person who's receiving the work. And so Unlike a lot of things I had done over the years energetically, and was, you can imagine technically in, in the role in medicine that I play, so much of it is precision. It's all about doing things in specific ways and, you know, or touching the body here and then moving there and doing these kinds of things. But it, that's not the nature of this work. It's about embodying your own expanded energy and then working with the person to create a quantum field that allows the energy to come in through the person themselves and create or evoke the changes. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, a beautiful process, but it's very simple in a way by design. It's not a technical process at all. It's more of a heart expansion. And so that'll make sense as people experience the work, I think more than talk about it. <laughs> wow, that is so incredible. And so how many people are practicing your unity field healing around the world then? We have about 500 practitioners now around the planet. So, and some of them practice um, a lot and others, it was interesting for me because when I first started teaching the work in 2015 or 16 to practitioners, um, the first group of practitioners I taught, a lot of them were people who worked in energy healing or, you know, they were Reiki masters or they had done Chinese medicine and work with acupuncture, you know, people already very open-minded and understanding of the energy world. And I thought that's who all the practitioners would be. I thought, you know, of course, that's who's going to come to be an energy practitioner. But half of the class was this mishmash of people who made absolutely no sense. <laughs> <laughs> For example, I had a teacher uh, who was an elementary school teacher. I had a gentleman who was an um, air traffic control teacher. Uh, you know, I had a, a mom of uh, autistic kids at home. I had all kinds of, I, I can't even remember now the spectrum of people, but just to give you an idea, it was of this unusual group of people, half very straightforward energy practitioners, half of another spectrum. And so what I learned as I began to teach the work is that 
people exercise the work as practitioners in different ways. So for example, there are people who have healing practices and they do the sessions, you know, exactly as we're, as they're explained, session one, session two, session three. And then there are other people who kind of embody this new energy and they embody the expansion that it brings through the exposures and the activations or the attunements, if you will, that are part of the training. And then hold the energy in spaces where it supports them and the people they're with. Wow. So for example, the teacher with the kids, she said, John, she said, I'm telling you, I was ready to quit my job. She said, the kids are so distracted. They're so not interested in the standard linear way that we do things. I couldn't keep balance in the room. I was, I felt like I was going from one crisis to another all the time in the space. But she said, since I've done the training, she said, what I do is in the morning, I, I just calmly attune my own energy field before I start the day. And she said, it has completely transformed my experience of a teacher in the classroom. The children feel it and know it, and it creates a harmony that did not exist before I did it. And so that was brilliant to me because I thought it helped me understand more the potential or the power or kind of the really how the work will be used and, and brought into manifestation in different ways. Another lady worked with animal healing, but the 24th chromosome is a human specific thing. It's not really part of animals genetic system. And so I thought, well, we can't really do this work on animals, but she said, I don't. She said, what I do is the same kind of thing. She said, I embody, I, I think of my own energy system. I think of the template, I attune my energy and then I follow the intuition I'm given to work with the animal directly, energetically. And she said, it's so amplified the healing power of what I'm doing with animals. So they've, they, the work is kind of transformed. It can extend in different ways. So I say all that because about half the people who do the training will do practitioner work. And on the website, for example, I have a an international listing of people who offer sessions or either in person or do them at a distance, which are really equally as powerful as doing them in person when you understand energy. And um, and then there are a group of other people who are bringing the energy work to life in different ways. So not really as practitioners of the sessions per se, but doing different things like that. So there's about 500 people around the planet now. So we're having some really amazing experiences and, and healing stories and all kinds of things that happen. <laughs> that is so powerful, Dr. John. I love that. And, and it is really incredible how people are drawn. There are so many beautiful modalities out there having, we have about a hundred practitioners on our own dash heals.com platform. And our theory actually is though, that the reason so many people go a whole lifetime without finding the right energy healer, therapist, dentist, doctor, whatever it might be, is that there's an energetic variability that only, no matter how good we are, Dr. John, most of us can only tolerate so much variability from ourselves. Mm -hmm. One of our theories too is that teachers and students are drawn to each other in the same way. So mm -hmm. it's fascinating to understand how we receive energy. And I even feel the energy coming off of you right now. Like a <laughs> I feel beautiful energy activation and I'm sure our audience feels it too. So on that note, Dr. John, I would love to have you share with our audience and with the listeners out there, where can they either one, get trained if they want to get trained in mm -hmm. unity field healing or two, learn more about the incredible work you're doing? Absolutely. So the all of the work, uh, if, of Unity Field Healing is on a central website called unityfieldhealing.com. So very straightforward. And on the webpage, there's a, an array of things. There's tabs at the top, which will kind of navigate the website. There's, there's a section that explains the work, the origins of the work. There's a section explaining the sessions. There's a section explaining uh, practitioner training for people who are interested in personally becoming practitioners. There's a tab for people who give sessions, who offer sessions. Um, and then there's some work, there's a tab that's called the Syrian connection of the Syrian transmission. So that's, it's a whole other story. <laughs> it's part of the work, but it talks about, you know, uh, the Syrian beings and how they do work. I do other work with them called monthly transmissions. And so these are meditations and guided teachings that come from this group of light beings and meditative experiences. So it, it couples with unity field healing work, but it's like an evolution of, of the work as well. So all of that is on the website. Uh, people can join the mailing list. They'll receive updates about future practitioner trainings and things like that. The training since the time of COVID, we switched to doing it in an online format. 
it was all done in person prior to that time. And that's created a wonderful opportunity for people to tune into the training and experience it, uh, you know, through a, a live weekend teaching, but held in an online format. And uh, so all of that is there and the listing, the, the actual dates of things will be listed on the events page. We're just scheduling the 23 trainings now. So there's one training left in 2022 in November and it's timed for the Eastern time zone. And then, but what we do through the year is we offer them centered on different parts of the world. So there'll be a training as if it's 9 a.m. in the Pacific or 9 a.m. in London or 9 a.m. in Australia. <laughs> and that way people from all over the world can tune in at a, a good time during the day for, for learning and participating. And so the 2023 dates will be posted in the next couple of weeks. Incredible, Dr. John. Well, it has been such a pleasure. Literally, it's been vibrational. <laughs> vibrational. <laughs> To, get to be here with you today and we are so grateful to you and to brenda who is on om-heals.com if you want to find out if you match with brenda you can go to om-heals.com and find out who your matches are for free and see if brenda is one of them and uh, we are just so grateful for the beautiful work and for trusting your intuition i have a lot of doctor friends of mine who have sometimes gotten pushback from the medical community reaching out and doing energy medicine work. So kudos to you for pioneering on this path and walking your walk and sharing your light so brightly, Dr. John. It's been such a pleasure having you here today. Thank you kindly, Jen. Thank you very much. And to everybody listening as well. <laughs> yeah, so deep gratitude and uh, looking forward to getting to know more about Unity Field Healing. And please do check out Dr. John's work.